Please don't judge me for how I voted. Where did your mind go just now? Are you wondering who I voted for? Did you think she's one of us or she's one of them? I gave you zero information about how I voted or even what kind of voting I was talking about. And yet I'll bet that your mind went somewhere trying to fill in the blanks. We all do it. Our brains are wired to lead us to quick judgments and conclusions. It's a primal reflex intended to keep us safe. We simplify in order to understand, and we're uncomfortable with ambiguity. The problem is not in having automatic judgments, but failing to examine them. I'm going to talk about how our judgments skew our interactions and our understanding of the world in which we live. And then I'll give you some tips on what to do about it. So let's say we know five things about someone, five data points, like these five pieces of an eight-piece puzzle. We extrapolate to fill in the picture. We extend what we see into the blank space. And even if our extrapolation is not exactly right, it's close enough. We get the picture. But each of us is far more complex than an eight-piece puzzle. We are more like a 1,000-piece puzzle. And five data points or puzzle pieces do not tell us much, and certainly not enough to see the whole picture or make a judgment. Examining our judgments means being aware of how we extrapolate inside our own frame of reference without considering the framing of the other person. Let me give you a concrete example. Back in the 1990s, I was in a writing group, and at one point we wrote about our grandparents. As I read my essay, I spoke with pride about both sets of grandparents, those from Iceland and those from Iran. When I was finished, someone in the group crossed her arms and asked me, were your Iranian grandparents Muslim? Yes, they were, I said. Well, she replied, I think Islam is a horrible religion. Just look at the Taliban. Here's the thing. The problem was not in what she knew about the Taliban. It was how she extrapolated inside her picture and projected it onto me. And she discarded any new information I provided if it did not fit into her puzzle. She did not consider that her framing might be limited or that my frame of reference was completely different. My picture was filled with pieces about my mother and the world she exposed me to. My mother was the opposite of the Taliban. She was multilingual and culturally adaptable. She was deeply committed to peace in the world. And she could talk to people of any nationality, whether she spoke the language or not. I remember when she visited me when I lived in Switzerland. I was invited to a party. And being in my mid-20s, I was embarrassed to take my mom with me. But I did. It was a casual party with about 20 people, most of whom were from European or African countries. And within an hour, my mother was entertaining the entire group with her funny stories, making us all laugh. Her gift was an ability to create joyful connection with anyone. When my mother was growing up in Iran in the 1920s and 30s, she was exposed to other cultures and religions due to her father's work. And in the 1940s, she was one of a handful of women who graduated from the University of Tehran. She was a complex person, for sure, and deeply spiritual, but never defined by one particular religion. 
So my listener in the writing group had a frame that was like an eight-piece puzzle in which five pieces were represented by the Taliban. And my 1,000-piece puzzle did not have the Taliban in it at all, or even the Muslim faith. This story is a great example of what we all do every day when we do not examine our judgments. We do it with Republicans and Democrats, millennials and boomers, us and them. We take a few facts we know and extrapolate into blank space, ascribing characteristics to people that are our projections without questioning whether or not such projections are true. Let me give you a more recent example. Several years ago, a conservative author wrote an opinion piece for a liberal newspaper. Readers were outraged. How dare the newspaper print an article that denied climate change? Twitter was on fire, and many public figures weighed in. I decided to use that article in one of my workshops without the name of the author or the publisher, no background, and I asked my participants to summarize it. They all said that the author was cautioning against absolute certainty in any scientific analysis, including climate change, because doing so could lead to second best solutions. There was nothing in the article that denied climate change. And yet hundreds of people were yelling in the public square because they had projected onto the article their own meaning. So much of our culture of outrage and indignation on the left and the right is due to misinterpretation and choosing, consciously or not, to run with our judgments without pausing to examine them. So what can we do about it? Well, let's recognize that there are several levels of communication skills. Level one is basic, be polite. Level two is better. It's about speaking thoughtfully and listening attentively. Most people stop there, but level three is where the magic happens. It includes the outwardly directed skills of speaking and listening and adds inwardly directed skills of self-reflection. This is where we ask ourselves, how am I interpreting this? And what is the context of the other person and how might it differ from mine? The questions we ask ourselves are as important as the questions we ask others. It makes a world of difference. I'm quoting my mentors, Sheila Ramsey, Barbara Shetty, and Gordon Watanabe. They developed a framework for self-reflection called personal leadership, making a world of difference. I trained under them, and I have incorporated their model into my teaching and into my daily life because I find it so transformative. So let me leave you with three phrases that you can practice in any conversation. One, ask yourself, how am I interpreting this? Two, ask yourself, what do I not know? And three, say to the other person, tell me more. Explore the nuances and complexities in their answers. Remember the 1,000 piece puzzle. It creates a completely different conversation, one of discovery instead of debate. You can transform any interaction into a creative possibility at home, at work, with friends, when you add this element of self-reflection. It makes a difference, and you can make a difference just by trying it. Thank you.